Dear learners, welcome you all to e-learning platform. Now you are in week 11. In this week you will learn Major Themes in St. John written by George Bernard Shaw. Me first learned with you throughout the whole lecture from the beginning to the end. Faculty member of the Department of English, World University of Bangladesh. Let's begin. The first measure team, self-assuredness. The second one is power. The third measure team is gender. The fourth, holiness. The fifth, justice. The sixth, nationalism. The seventh, integrity. Okay. So let's discuss this in detail. First one, self-assuredness. John is repeatedly cautioned that she may be guilty of the sin of pride. It was shocking for a young woman from a humble background to show so much confidence and to see herself as ordeal of being God's messenger. While John does not seem to think she is better than anyone else, she also does not question that she has the right to serve in God's plan. In a time when both gender and class norms would have suggested that she consider herself far below the powerful man she interacts with, Joan is not afraid to stand up for herself and ask to be taken seriously. She even sees herself as capable of being advice of giving advice to the dauphin the next would be king of france during the 15th century what other characters misinterpret as pride is actually john's self-assuredness i mean the self-confidence and her devout faith in god's plan Next one, power. The whole play presents the struggle for power in the fight between the French and the Englishmen. Power also, power also plays out in other ways. For example, war we can caution, spare over the powers of the church and feudal lords. Both men are fearful of John because she has the potential to disrupt their hold and power but the strive for power in different ways as a whole the play depicts power as a force that motivates people to do whatever is necessary joan dies because she ends up caught in the middle of power struggles and many people are willing to let her burn even though they know she is innocent. Third one, gender. Joan is a very strange character for her age. She is a woman. Again, she, she is an adolescent. Yet, yet she acts like she is a soldier and refuses to do the things that are expected of her, such as getting married and listening to what men say to her. Instead, she revels against the conventions of her time and chooses to pick her own path and do what she thinks is right. Joan sees her gender as irrelevant to her mission. God chooses her and she will follow him no matter what he asks. It may be significant that two of the three saints who communicate with Joan are also women. She has models of what it means for women to be holy and carry out God's will. Out of the men around her, 
John's gender is a huge negative. A refusal to conform to gender norms and dress like a woman represents one more way in which Joan threatens to disrupt the delicate power balance of medieval power. Holiness. Throughout the play, characters debate whether Joan is a holy figure or a fraud. Interestingly, I mean evil, evil one. Interestingly, many of the characters that serve the church are among the first to accuse Joan of being a fraud or a messenger of Satan instead of God and question her ability to perform miracles. They know better than anyone that holiness can be feigned as a way to manipulate people or hold on to power. It is typically, it is typically, the more humble characters such as common soldiers that believe most earnestly in Joan's holiness. Joan herself is also surprised why never characters question her mot motives because her faith is so integral to her. To her, <coughs> it never acquit. It never occurs to her that anyone would use God or holiness as a tool for manipulation. Justice. Justice is a major theme in the play, especially since Jones' trial plays such a prominent part. Most people would like to assume that a lengthy court trial carried out by educated people would result in a just verdict. But Shaw shows that this is not always the case. Many of the people involved in Joan's trial are determined to see her executed whether she is guilty or innocent. The play also shows that integrity and good deeds are not always rewarded justly. Joan lives according to her principles and never does anything wrong. In a just world, she would be celebrated and respected. Yet in a flawed world of scheming and manipulation, she suffers a terrible death which she does not deserve. Nationalism. Shaw, George Bernard Shaw very explicitly introduces the theme of nationalism into the play Many historians argue that the Hundred Years' War was important in defining both France and English identities, since years of warfare created a sense of loyalty and distrust of the other. Of the other. War Week specifically criticizes Joan for the way in which she encourages soldiers to think of themselves primarily loyal to their ruler and country rather than to their local feudal lord. <coughs> Warwick fears that she consequences of this centralized political power will affect the power of himself and other land-owning aristocrats. John is less interested in whom people are loyal to because she values loyalty to God above all else. For her, Nationalism is connected with the language spoken in a region, and she uses this characteristic to define which territory should be controlled by a given ruler. Integrity. Throughout the play, the integrity of Joan and other characters is challenged and, and tested. Many people assume that Joan must have other motives or be seeking to somehow expand her own power and influence. This belief about Joan's integrity seems to stem from the fact that most of her characters have very little integrity, but they are corrupted. They are motivated by the desire to secure power and influence, and they will do whatever is necessary to hang on 
to the power. In fact, even Jones' integrity wavers due to fear of death. Confronted with the prospect of being executed, she signs a confession she does not believe in. However, Joan retracts the confession and goes to her death, determined to live and die according to her principles. That's the end of the lesson in week 11. Thank you very much for being with me. Goodbye.